early on, I said we wanted a shipping power station, and Croydon came up, and we were looking at it, and I said, well, I always wanted to look inside a cooling tower. The film company, making Brazil, are using the cooling towers now. I don't really want to know too much about the tricks they're getting up to over there. It looks quite a dangerous procedure to me. We built a walkway across to the middle of it, four and a half feet wide. But originally it was just one of those little spines that what, were nine inches wide going out there. I was terrified. There weren't any particularly easy scenes in this film. Everyone was a nightmare. <laughs> My job in Brazil was to age Catherine from 70 to 40. This meant making her look older at first, then making her look younger afterwards. Um, the job involved taking a head cast of Catherine. <laughs> and already she's twice as beautiful as she was before. Voila! This is Catherine Hellman's head. What I've got to do now is sculpt in clay all the bags and wrinkles that make her look older. This can take a week or two. What I do next is make a latex copy of the clay modelling that's been done on this face, which looks something like this. I first met Terry Gilliam on the telephone. It seems that he was doing a film called Time Bandits, and he said, hello, want to come and do a film with a crazy American? He had seen Soap, which was very popular over here, and still is, I guess, it's still going. And he thought that my kind of acting suited his kind of directing and scripts, <laughs> just bent, just a little off. At the time we were doing Time Bandits, he talked to me about the character that I'm doing now. He said then, that he had an idea for a crazier film than Time Bandits, but he didn't think anybody would ever give him the money to do it. These suits which we have made special for a scene in the film where the air conditioning goes wrong, you see. So they get the two guys from the ministry to come along and rectify the fault. <laughs> have you got a 27B stroke six? 27 B stroke six. We found a company that make plastic suits for people that work in chemical environments. Believe it or not, people wear these when they're manufacturing bread to stop the hormones getting in their lungs, so we're told. What? My God, what's going on? Emergency procedures. I haven't got an emergency. Sam and Tuttle, uh, Robert De Niro, they come along and they change over the sewerage for the oxygen supply on a panel outside the flat. Oh, God. Jesus. The smell, stop it! Oh, God. Shit! We're all in it together, kid. <laughs> I don't know how De Niro does it, but he does it. It doesn't even show when you're first looking at it, and then when you put the whole thing together, it's there, it's a film performance, it's not a performance per slate. Arnon Milshon is producing, uh, they'd not just done King of Comedy and was doing Once Upon a Time in America, both starring De Niro. Action! Arnon was saying, well, why don't we get someone like Bobby De Niro to be in the thing, you know? He just didn't consider that sort of thing. He's far too big a name for the likes of us. It's a very daunting prospect to have someone from a totally different background in terms of discipline and training. It was only to the last minute he finally said yes. And it became such a battle, us trying to convince him, at the same time trying to tell him it was going to be very difficult. Every two weeks, I get a visiting uh, celebrity comes and acts. 
why. I came into this game for the action, the excitement. Go anywhere, travel light, get in, get out, wherever there's trouble, a man alone. He's got an amazing screen presence. I mean, there's a strange animal magnetism there. The minute he comes into the, into the film, you feel it. <laughs> there's something in here. And for him, this was a very difficult thing because he's never done a bit part in a film. And he's the star of a film, always. In a strange way, he's turned out to be the most important relationship for the Sam character in there. Who was that? As a friend of mine, he... There are no nice, cozy, domestic scenes. No long car shots where you can get in nice music. You know, it's hard to, for people to just sit and say, well, what is this film about? Because you're being smashed in the head all the time by these, these visuals. The eyes actually follow Sam flying across the sky and finally landing on the top of the, the stone monolith. Oh, it's going to be a shock to see the single eye. When we pull back and see that the thousand of damn things, it's going to be horrendous. And then when they move, it's going to get even worse. The main ball is a, a snooker ball, cue ball. And the iris is a photographic reduced painting. Then we have to make the, the lens by pouring clear casting resin from the back. The whole lot took about three weeks to make it. I can't come back. I want to set this pan. Filming of it probably about another three, four weeks. And as I was putting it together, I suddenly realised that half of the dream sequences that we had were, um, weren't working, and the opening dream sequences would actually spread to fill up the space that the other dreams were going to take. Well, I seem to do this in every film. There's a great sequence that gets lost, and the eyeball sequence is, is one. Some things had to go. Unfortunately, uh, the eyeball sequence went. No, I mean, that's the problem. I find the whole process a depressing one, because it's much easier to imagine amazing amazing places and things and uh when you actually put it on film it's it's not quite as good as you imagined it um don't go Please. What is Brazil? Yeah, no, I, I just thought there was something else on the mind of Japanese words. I don't even know why it's called Brazil. I keep asking Terry why it's called Brazil. At the beginning of filming, I, I had a, a view of it. Um, and at the end of the filming, I'll have a view of it. Right now, because we're right in the middle, it's, uh, I've forgotten. Um, nobody knows. It's Brazil. It's, uh... But answer number two. <laughs> uh, how about the impossibility of escape from reality? How about that? It's a Viking musical. Uh, let's try another one. Uh, about late night shopping and uh, terrorist bombings. Uh, at the moment, I don't really know which script is being shot. Terry said, well, for heaven's sakes, don't say that it's too serious <laughs> to anybody because uh, then people will stay away from it. Yeah, I think there's a lot, a lot of strange things in this film. <laughs> no, I, no, I have no scenes with, with Nastasia Kinski. She's still not in it. I'm not sure if this is the kind of plug that Terry wants for his movie. <laughs> it's like lifting the top off Terry Gilliam's skull. It's mad. And glimpsing inside. And it's wonderful. It's entering Terry Gilliam land. It's, it's Franz Kafka meets Walter Mitty. It's fine. <laughs> Very strange. <laughs> oh, let me rephrase it. It's fine. It's great. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs>